Hello everyone and welcome to my free-to-play Iron Man startup guide. So in this video I'm going to attempt to go through a whole lot of information about uh, things you want to know and general path you want to follow when you're first starting a free-to-play Iron Man account. Uh, this is aimed at people who are going to be playing free-to-play only as kind of an account limitation, um, but I guess it also applies to people who might just want to start their accounts as free-to-play and go from there. But my assumption in this video is that you are a Free to play restricted uh, Iron Man. I will try to. I will try to have this be relevant to both or to all of the three of the hardcore, ultimate, and regular Iron Men, because um, things do vary slightly, but most things are quite similar for the most part. So I will try to have as much information as I can uh, displayed on the screen as well. Um, but mostly, this video is just going to be talking while I have gameplay of my own free to play ultimate in the background. Um, and I will try to have pretty much all of the same information in, like, written out in text in the description as well, so take a look there if you want to see uh, anything that you might have missed during the video and get, uh, get it in text form as well. So I guess that's about as much preface as we need, I guess we can just get started. So basically with any account that you make in RuneScape, pretty much no matter what you're doing, uh, you want to start with questing, and that's no different for free-to-play. Um, there might be a few things that you have to do before you can do every quest though. Uh, but generally, you pretty much want to do all of the free-to-play quests as soon as you can. Uh, you can skip a few of them, but you want to do pretty much all of them since you need quest points to be able to do Dragon Slayer, since there's a quest point requirement to get into the Champions Guild. So probably one of the first things you want to do when you've just started your account is to complete the Stronghold of Security, all the floors, so that you can get the 10,000 coins um, and a pair of boots. I guess you can actually just do the first three floors to get the coins, I think. Uh, but those 10,000 coins will come in uh, very useful for buying some runes to train your magic at the start. Um, if you don't want to do this or you need more GP, you can also do steel plate bodies and steel plate legs in the wilderness. Uh, you can collect the steel plate legs in the ruins and the steel plate bodies up in the lava maze, and you can sell those to specialized shops. Um, but I would definitely do the stronghold of security first. You will need a little bit of food, so I recommend that you just go and get some wines from Fortunato in uh, Draenor Village. You can just use your Tutorial Island GP to buy those, since they only cost 1 GP each. Bring a fair amount of those, and you should be able to make it through the Stronghold fine with no stats at all. And uh, you want to get yourself up to 13 magic, and you can do that by just... Uh, I would probably just, you know, use like Wind Strike, and then Water Strike, and then Earth Strike, etc. on pretty much anything that you want to kill. It doesn't really matter that much, and it should happen very quickly. And then you should be pretty much be all set to do all of the quests other than Dragon Slayer. Um, I'm going to link in the description a video uh, where a guy shows how to basically multi-quest all of the free-to-play quests other than Dragon Slayer, uh, and also other than Mistalin Mystery, uh, which is a newer one and also not quite as important to do right away. But there are a fair amount of free-to-play quests that give a decent XP to start off with, like the Knight Sword gets you straight to 29 smithing, the Restless Ghost gets you to 9... Uh, nine prayer and doing vampire slayer gets you straight to 20 attack which is very helpful um so that's pretty much what i do to start make some gp get your magic to 13 and then do vampire slayer along with most of the rest of the free-to-play quests i would highly recommend though that you do not do rune mysteries if especially if you're a regular iron man like a, either a gray helm or a, a hardcore iron man like not an ultimate iron man uh you probably don't want to do rune mysteries because you can collect unlimited air talismans by just doing the drop trick with uh, like the duke or whatever it is in Lumbridge Castle, and you can use those air talismans to make air tiaras, um, which can be a really nice runecrafting method, but after you've completed rune mysteries, uh, you won't be able to do that anymore because you won't be able to collect those air talismans for free. So I would hold off and think closely before you do rune mysteries, and also Mistalin mystery, uh, you get a ruby from that, so if you're an ultimate Iron Man, you probably want to uh, save that quest until after you have 50 crafting um, because at 50 crafting you can make a amulet of strength and before that carrying around a ruby would be a waste of inventory space and rubies are actually pretty rare to get um, so it might be wise to save mistalin mystery since it gives you a ruby you might also want to hold off on doing imp catcher especially if you're an ultimate iron man because it's kind of a slow quest to do especially with low combat stats you have to get all the the beads by killing imps and also, the Amulet of Accuracy can only be obtained once, uh, so especially if you're an Ultimate Iron Man, uh, it probably would be wise to save it if you want to actually be able to hold on to the Amulet of Accuracy long term, since uh, it will be a wasted inventory space once you get better amulets if you're a Ultimate Iron Man. On this account, I still have not completed Imcatcher for that reason, because I don't want to like 
get the amulet and then have to get rid of it and never be able to get it back again. So yeah, I think you should still be able to get up to 32 quest points without doing uh, Rune Mysteries, Mistlin Mystery, and Imp Catcher. Uh, and you need the 32 quest points to be able to do Dragon Slayer. Uh, you won't be able to do Dragon Slayer right away, you'll have to train your stats up a little bit, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So the best skill to train early on is crafting, because you can make a lot of good GP from crafting, and you also need crafting levels to be able to make all the different useful amulets, so Amulet of Magic, and then Amulet of Strength, and then Amulet of Power for Magic, Melee, and Range Training respectively. Um, so the best way to train crafting, uh, at least at lower levels, is definitely to do Silver. Uh, doing Holy Symbols is the best way to make more GP. Uh, tiaras are worth significantly less GP than symbols, but they're slightly more XP, so uh, most people will probably will choose to do symbols for at least early levels when they're still trying to make GP to get the basic, you know, gear, magic levels, and that kind of stuff that they want. In terms of training crafting from level 1, uh, I think you can get a little bit of crafting XP from, like, Sheep Shear and Goblin Diplomacy, but uh, you'll need to do either pottery or cow hides until 16 crafting, and then you can start doing symbols. If you're going to do pottery, uh, the way that I did it on my ultimate was I mined clay in the dwarven mines and then had like one or two jugs with me and I filled the jugs with water on the fountains in the monastery and then used the pottery wheels in the barbarian village and then went back and repeat. If you're going to do cows, then I just I guess just kill them in lumberage and then take them over to the tanner and do it that way. Once you have 16 crafting, you can do silver, and I would do silver either in the Alcarid mine or mine it at uh, Verak Southwest mine and use canoes to get to the Lumberge Furnace and back and forth that way. Um, I'm not exactly sure which is faster, but it would probably more depend on which is busier, so they're kind of both viable options and it's up to you really which one you'd rather do. Uh, there are aggressive scorpions that are level 14 in the Alcarid mine, so you should wait until you're at least 29 combat before you do that one. Uh, so you might want to train your melees a little bit before that if you're planning to do it that way. And there's a mugger where you need at least 13 combat to be to have him unaggressive towards you at the Varrock Southwest mine. Um, so either way, it probably would be wise to train your melees a little bit before doing this. Um, but from the GP that you get from plate bodies or quests, you should be able to afford a myth scimitar and you can just train your melees on cows or chickens or something like that to get your combat levels up to at least the basic levels to avoid that, the aggressive monsters. So I would recommend just go ahead and do crafting with holy symbols until 40 um, at either Alcarid or Varric Southwest and make sure you're selling your symbols to the general store. Um, and from this you'll make a decent amount of GP. They, you, you probably want to hop worlds because the, the fewer you sell per world the more GP per symbol you get. I think when I was doing the low level crafting, I sold five per world and hopped a bunch of times. And then at higher level crafting, I was selling like just, I think like 10 to 15 per world. So I was just hopping once. Um, but yeah, you can make a pretty nice amount of GP from these. And uh, I would recommend going to 40 with Alcarid or Varric Southwest. And then from 40 onwards, you can use the crafting guild. Uh, and this is definitely noticeably faster, but in order to use the crafting guild very effectively, you definitely want to have teleports. Um, you want to be able to teleport to Thalador, and then you can walk back from Thalador to the Grafting Guild and just saves quite a bit of time. Um, and in order to do teleports, you need to have your 37 magic, which hopefully you will have had done, and you'll also need to have Law Runes, um, so you'll need to kill some things that drop those because there's no way to buy them in free-to-play. So the best Law Droppers in free-to-play are Ankus, um, but Moss Giants and Hill Giants are also reasonably decent. Ankus are quite a bit better though, so... It probably is wise to train your magic on Ankus early on, so you can get more laws and uh, have those to use for training crafting more efficiently. To get from 40 to 50 crafting with teleports, you only need like 60 laws, so that won't take very long to get it all. Um, and to get from 40 all the way to 70 crafting, if you want to get that power amulet, you'll need about 700 laws, so that'll take a little bit longer to get, but still not too terrible. For the long term of law collecting, it's definitely wisest to range Ankus, because ranging is cheaper than magic and is better DPS, and you don't want to be meleeing Ankus since they will do a lot of damage on you if you're not safe spotting. So as far as range training, you'll need a little bit of GP to start off to buy arrows. I would not recommend using anything other than bronze and iron arrows, at least early on, because the rest are just far more expensive and only a little bit higher DPS. Uh, of course, you buy arrows from low in the shop in Verok. Um, and I, for range training, I would probably train on something like chickens until around 20, and then switch to minotaurs from there. Minotaurs are in the first floor of the security stronghold, and they drop a bunch of iron arrows and some bronze arrows also. Uh, killing minotaurs with range is completely sustainable in terms of arrows, which is pretty nice. 
And I would also recommend for like mid mid low level melee training, like 20 plus, to kill minotaurs with melee also, just to get more free arrows, uh, the better drops than like goblins or chickens or something like that. So yeah, I probably wouldn't start ranging Ankus until you're around 40 ranged. So I would do I did uh, 1 to 20 on chickens and then 20 to 40 on minotaurs and then 40 plus on Ankus. So getting to 50 crafting will take a decent little bit of time, probably around 10 to 15 hours uh, because it's not terribly fast experience. But once you get that 50 crafting, you'll be able to make ruby amulets. Getting a strength amulet is definitely very beneficial before you do a whole lot of melee training. So it would probably be wise to get it before doing Dragon Slayer. Uh, you will, after you get 50 crafting, also need to get 49 or 48 with a wizard mind bomb uh, magic uh, in order to be able to enchant the uh, ruby amulet into a strength amulet. Um, so once again, I would probably train your magic with fire strikes on Ankus, and you'll get a nice amount of laws from that, which you can use for future crafting or smithing training. Um, and you should have plenty of GP to buy the runes for that after you've done crafting to 50, since you'll make like, I think around 130k GP from selling all those symbols. So that should be plenty of GP to train your magic up again. After you've gotten that strength amulet, I'd recommend training your melees a decent amount. Uh, I, the best thing to always use is a scimitar if you can, so the highest level scimitar you can equip. Uh, past mithril scimitar, the adamant and rune ones are smithing only, so the next best weapon is a short sword, since you probably won't have the smithing level to make add your rune scimitars early on. Um, and short swords can all be purchased either from the sword shop in Verak or from the Champions Guild for the rune short sword. On this account, I did Dragon Slayer with uh, 30 attack, 20 strength, and 20 defense, and I used a adamant short or long sword, I forget which. And the only reason it was possible for me to do this is because you can flinch Elvarg. So if you're not that familiar with runescape combat mechanics and don't feel comfortable flinching, then I would probably recommend getting your melee stats higher than that, probably around like. 40 40 40 attack strength defense before you do dragon slayer and then you can bring like some rune armor and like a rune short sword or something like that and that would probably be a good setup for killing alvarg but yeah the earlier that you do dragon slayer the better because the xp reward from the quest is really good and uh getting that xp earlier will just get you more levels so once you've got your strength amulet your all, all of the quests done including dragon slayer and you know the 50 crafting and all that then you're pretty much done for just like the basic stuff that I would recommend any free-to-play Iron Man get done. Um, and after this, you can kind of just choose your own path, and that's what RuneScape is all about. Um, but there are some good things to keep in mind when you're trying to decide what you're going to work on next. In general, you should only train smithing and crafting with law runes to teleport, because both skills you can use teleporting methods to make them a lot faster. Basically, you only ever want to do either iron, silver, or gold for these, and you'll be doing silver and gold at Crafting Guild teleport into Falador, and with iron, it depends on whether you're an ultimate or a regular. Um, if you're an ultimate, you're going to be doing the thing I'm doing right now, which is Varric Southwest with two teleports per run. And if you're a regular, then you just teleport to Falador, um, and you can mine the Dwarven Mine, teleport to Falador, smelt, bank the bars, and then you can uh, use the bars in the Anvil and Varrock to train that way, and it uses fewer laws, which is nice. Another thing worth noting for doing silver runs is that if you're making tiaras and you're somebody who hasn't done rune mysteries and is planning to use uh, air talismans to train with, then you can combine crafting and uh, rune crafting training by taking air talismans with you on your runs to the crafting guild, since the air altar is right along the way to get there. And then you can use some of the talismans that you craft to, to make them into uh, air tiaras and get some XP that way, which is pretty nice. If you care a lot about efficiency, then the best thing to do is to train smithing fairly early, at least if you want to be able to train all of your skills efficiently, because in order to be able to train woodcutting efficiently, you need a rune axe, and in order to make a rune axe, you need 85 smithing with a plus one boost from the Dwarven Stouts, which is a very high smithing level and takes a very long time to get on a free-to-play Iron Man. Um, but yeah, both both woodcutting and fire making comes alongside woodcutting, and melees are kind of locked behind high smithing levels if you want to train them fully efficiently. Uh, you need 89 smithing with a plus one boost to make a rune scimitar, which is the best DPS melee weapon. Otherwise, you'll be using a rune short sword, which isn't that much worse, um, but it is worse. So if you want to be 100% efficient, then doing smithing early on is a pretty nice goal. And of course, in order to do smithing, you need laws, um, so you need to train ranged is the best option to get laws quickly, ranging Ankus. Uh, if you followed this account that I'm training now at all, the path that I've followed is basically everything that I said, and then I went on to do 99 ranged on Ankus. 
um, to get the laws to be able to do smithing, and uh, I want to get 89 smithing so I can kind of unlock the like full access to playing every skill efficiently. Um, and this takes a very long time, so only get yourself into this if you really, really want it. I, th I think I've put over 1,500 hours into this account, um, and I'm not quite done with this just this smithing goal yet, and that's pretty much all I've worked on. As far as skills you can kind of do whenever without worrying about being inefficient, uh, fishing and cooking of course go together, you should just do trout and salmon, and the only thing you need for those is some feathers, which will cost a little bit of GP. I think it only costs maybe 500k to buy all the feathers for 99 fishing, so you could do that whenever you want really, and it doesn't affect it doesn't affect your efficiency when you do fishing. The same goes for runecrafting, though runecrafting is incredibly slow. Uh, doing doing air tiaras alongside crafting adds up to a bit, but you can't do that all the way. So eventually, you'll have to do. If you're an ultimate, you'll do earth runes, and if you're a regular Iron Man, you'll do body runes, since you can bank the essence and then do those afterwards. Um, but yeah, runecrafting is generally about 3.5 to 4k XP per hour, so it's quite slow, and since you can just buy all the runes that you could craft for really cheap, runecrafting isn't terribly useful either. But it is something you can train if you really want to. Magic training you can really do whenever you want also. The best thing to do for magic XP is to splash curses, which you can do on pretty much any monster that you want with just full plate armor so you never... full uh, plate armor and uh, green dehyde vampraces so you never actually succeed. If you want to be actually getting drops though, then you can fire strike either Ankus or Moss Giants, and that's another decent option. Slower XP per hour, but more AFK, and you can get some nice drops. The downside of magic is that it is by far the most expensive skill to train, since you need to buy all those runes. Uh, I think you need like at least 5 mil GP to get 99, and uh, more or less depending on whether you do curses or fire strikes or maybe even crumble undead. And that's basically all the skills. There's melees, uh, which you save for smithing, there's wood cutting and fire making you save for smithing. Fishing and cooking you can do whenever, crafting, smithing, and mining all kind of go together, um, and those are dependent on laws. Oh, I guess the last thing is prayer training. Of course you should kill monsters that drop big bones most of the time, and Kuz are the only exception since their law drops are so good. Um, but other than that, you should only train prayer through Boneyard, or I think the Chaos Temple might be decent also, but both of those are willy bone spawn areas. Um, and it's quite slow and not terribly beneficial to have high prayer, so most people don't really bother to train that outside of just killing monsters and burying the bones. If you're looking for some decent goals to just get yourself going and get working towards something, then one really nice goal that won't take a huge amount of time is to get either 508 or 758 total level to be able to access the different free-to-play total level requirement worlds. Uh, they're listed as 750 and 500, but since these are only including your free-to-play skills. You have eight skills at level one that are member skills, so you actually need 508 or 758. And these worlds are really nice because there aren't, there, there are very rarely any bots in these worlds, and they're just less crowded for resources in general, which is very nice for things like uh, mining and woodcutting and stuff, so you can avoid lots of bots. Um, so those are nice goals to go for, and you can just work on all different skills and get a good and get your account kind of rounded off. And the last thing is I wanted to mention in this guide are just some general useful tips to know while, while you're playing free-to-play. Um, so the first thing I mentioned this earlier, but using you take advantage of wines because you can buy wines from an NPC in Draenor Village Market. They're 1 GP each, they heal 11, and they're really good. The only downside is that they drain your attacks, so they're best to just use while you're doing uh, magic or range training, but or just going into the wilderness or something where you don't care about your attack level, but I've used quite a few wines in this account and they're quite useful. Um, take advantage of your minigame teleports. You can teleport to Last Man Standing and you can also teleport to Clan Wars once every 20 minutes for each one of these teleports. I think it is, it's either 20 or 30 minutes, but yeah, they're like limited to time, but you can use Clan Wars and you can use the Clan Wars portal to recharge your run energy. And as an ultimate Iron Man, you can use the coffer at Last Man Standing to store coins. Uh, which is pretty useful. I have like 500k coins stored there right now, so I don't need to take up the inventory space with those. And both of those are in like the same area, so you can basically use both of those to quickly get to the Clan Wars portal. Um, so for anything where you're using Run Energy, you might want to work that into your cycle every time you can to get a free recharge. If you ever want to get to Port Serum quickly, you can go to the Shantae Pass and talk to the Shantae there and tell them you're a uh, tell them that you're like an outlaw and then they'll send you to the Port Serum jail and then you can just break out of the prison cell and you'll be, it's basically a free teleport to Port Serum. There's an item called the Chronicle which you can buy from Diango and Draenor and then you can buy 10 teleport cards with it per day. 
and you fill the book with teleport cards and it will teleport you to the champions guild right outside of it um, so this is kind of a daily thing you can do and it's pretty nice to get to the Varak southwest mine quickly uh, so you can use it to mine iron or silver there and just save a little bit of time per day doing that it's also a one inventory space teleport which most most teleports in free to play you need at least two inventory spaces or three um, to have the laws and the two other runes or a staff equipped Take advantage of canoes. You can use the canoe transport system in free to play, and it's a good way to get to deep wilderness quickly if you have the woodcutting level to make the waka canoe. Um, and just in general, uh, using the canoe from like from Lumbridge to Varax Southwest Mine can be a nice method to go back and forth between the mine and the furnace. Don't dismiss your randoms because some randoms are actually really good for free to play Iron Men, especially. Well, obviously the XP lamps are good. You should use your XP lamps in either runecrafting or smithing depending on which you care about more and which you have higher level in. Um, I use mine on smithing but after 89 I'll probably switch to runecrafting because it's slower than smithing. But smithing is the second slowest and it's much more useful than runecrafting. I always do my mazes. Uh, the maze random event is really good because it gives you all sorts of different useful things like death runes, chaos runes, nature runes, uh, noted coal which isn't actually terribly useful, um, and arrows but yeah. I always do those, and whenever I get deaths or chaos runes, I go to the Ankus and train a little bit of magic with them, and whenever I get nature runes, I just superheat some iron. As far as nature runes go, you should always superheat. Uh, with nature runes, you should never alk, because getting that smithing XP is really good. And lots of other random events can potentially give you gems, so if you're trying to get your hands on one of the rarer ones, like a ruby or a diamond, then you should probably do most of the random events you get just on the off chance that you get some gems from those. For regular Iron Men, not ultimates or hardcores most likely, you can take advantage of the Bandit Camp store in the wilderness. It's a general store that you can sell obviously anything to, and it buys items at ALK price, which is very, very useful. Uh, for regular Iron Men, you're going to be banking all of the like symbols, tiaras, and uh, iron plate bodies that you make for training, crafting, and smithing, and then you want to sell those to that Bandit store. For GP to train magic and ranged and stuff like that. Um, so it's best to sell I think like five per world and just hop through the worlds. Uh, for regular Iron Man while you're doing crafting you should switch between symbols and tiaras so that way you can sell two items at once and get that selling done faster. But for hardcore Iron Man and for ultimate Iron Man it's not really that practical to use that shop. Ultimates can't note things and hardcores probably don't want to die. In free to play you can make energy potions and it might potentially be worth making energy potions for some things for regular Iron Men but not really practical for ultimate Iron Men. But yeah, I mean run energy is a constant thing you should be thinking about. You should only run when you are low weight and you should walk when you have a lot of stuff on you. So you know, Lotus said I run when my inventory is empty on my iron runs and uh, walk for most of the other time. And it's good to just leave yourself logged in as much as you can if you go AFK since your run energy will recharge and that's just like free efficiency right there. Uh, depending on when you're watching this video, it might be close to Christmas and you should make sure that you definitely do the Christmas holiday event if you haven't already done it. It allows you to get the reindeer hat which you can use to spawn snow and snow can be used to do some three tick skilling for like fishing, woodcutting, and mining uh, which just makes you a bit more efficient and is a good thing to have. So. Do your holiday events in general, it's a nice thing to get done. You get the cosmetics, the, song, uh, the music tracks, and various potentially useful items. There are some rune items that you can only get from either smithing or monster drops. Uh, the rune axe and the rune uh, scimitar are only, only from smithing, um, but rune full helm and rune kite shield are both best and saw items that you can't get from shops. Uh, rune full helms you can get from greater demons deep in the wilderness, uh, or you can get them from killing Obor, which is the hill giant boss. Uh, so both of those are a good way to get yourself a rune full helm and rune kite shield uh, You can only get from obor or smithing, uh, but yeah killing obor for is a pretty good way to go as far as boosts go in free to play You can boost your magic uh, Plus two from 50 onwards or plus one below 50 with uh, Wizard mind bombs you can boost your mining and smithing plus one with dwarven stouts and You can boost your strength with strength potions I think you can also boost your defense a couple levels with the drainer manor cabbages, but not exactly too relevant but yeah, being able to boost your smithing and magic are quite useful for certain things, and strength potions might be something that are worth making depending on your status and that kind of thing. So I think I've pretty much covered the basics and maybe even some more detail than I really need to for some things. I hopefully will be able to cut down this video so it's not terribly long, um, but yeah, hopefully this video has been helpful to you guys. Free to play Iron Man is a really fun thing to do, but be, do be prepared for very, very time consuming grinds and incredibly slow XP rates, um, but especially just playing it early on can be very fun and nostalgic, so even if you don't get too far, it can still be 
really enjoyable and kind of a relaxing side project and something quite different from your very complicated members main accounts. Um, so yeah, I hope you're inspired. Thanks for watching the video and I will see you guys all later.